You know, speaking of people who ought to maybe take a look at themselves, you know, did you hear Hunter Biden's got his his new wife? I mean, you know, she's she's pregnant again. I mean, this this man knows how to have children. I'll tell you what, he hasn't figured out how to not have children yet with random women and sometimes including his wife. Remember, because he just had a child not so long ago with the woman who, uh, you know, is out in Arkansas named London Roberts, and she's now suing him for child support. And his answer to that is sort of, I don't have any money. All that, all those millions of dollars that I made, and we're learning more and more about that each day, thanks to some of the good work of Rudy Giuliani going over to the Ukraine and doing some investigative work on Hunter Biden and Joe Biden and the money they got paid, allegedly through the Burisma board, but which appears to have been laundered, according to Rudy Giuliani. Uh, you know, he's spent all that money. That's what Hunter Biden says. And it's just amazing. But he didn't show up in court in Arkansas. He didn't want to give a deposition. He doesn't want to give his financial information. He wants all that to be sealed. You know, just like the rest of that whole group, you know, the Democrats in power, Joe Biden and others, they don't want the rules to apply to them. You or I, you know, if we had a child with somebody in Arkansas, they would make us give up all our financial information. That's something people don't like about, you know, the family law system is they got to file these financial affidavits, which then can get out. You know, people can leak them out. That, that information can get out there. It's supposed to be protected, but it finds a way oftentimes of getting out. Well, Hunter Biden wants it officially sealed by the court. Imagine that. But the news of the day, what we were originally referring to is that he is having yet another child, and this with his new wife, Melissa Cohen Biden. So we congratulate them and wish them all the best in that endeavor. And speaking of endeavors that are failing, the impeachment endeavor that the Democrats have been after is absolutely falling on its face. I don't know if you saw the Judiciary Committee hearings last week. But they have passed the articles, two articles of impeachment through the Judiciary Committee in the House, and they are for obstruction of Congress and abuse of power, neither of which amounts to a high crime and misdemeanor, neither of which is particularly subject to being proven or disproven, both of which are just political, you know, activities by the House trying to attack the president. There's nothing about holding up aid to the Ukraine. There's nothing about colluding or conspiring with Russia. None of what we've heard for the past three years has come to pass. In other words, what they've told us were the crimes for the past three years that President Trump had clearly committed. None of that's come to pass. None of it's true. All the investigations have found that those allegations were false. And that's even after you have people like Adam Schiff telling you that he's seen the evidence. He's seen more than you and I have seen. And trust him, there is strong evidence of President Trump colluding with Russia. He said that. But then the Mueller report comes out, and it finds specifically no evidence of collusion, no conspiracy. So you've got people who've been lying to you for years through their teeth, and they, I, I don't know, do you think that a leopard can change its spots? I mean, <laughs> you know, we hear from these people today. Do you believe them now? You know, the frustrating part about that is the impeachment was started before he was president. Of course Planned it was. That. And Nancy Pelosi let that slip the other day that the impeachment's been going on for years now. Of course it has been. And they're going to get up on TV and they're going to say things like, you know, I'm very prayerful about this situation. And, and, you know, I'm so concerned for what this might do to our country. And we've got to keep an open mind. I haven't made up my mind yet. You've heard all these kind of phrases from Pelosi. You've heard them from Adam Schiff. They've, they're lying to us. I mean, they have no compunction about getting up there and just lying to our faces. And unfortunately, the media totally enables them because the media never calls them on this stuff. They never really put these people on the hot seat. And we saw some of that yesterday not being put on the hot seat, but being given essentially a pass. We saw some being given a pass yesterday to some of the folks who were on the Sunday shows, including James Comey. But just to stick with impeachment for a moment, I think this is pretty interesting. Some Democrats are already jumping ship. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. There were a lot of nays. 
Well, this is a pretty big deal because you've got a New Jersey Democrat who's literally going to be changing parties. Yeah, what is that about? And he said it's because of impeachment, because he doesn't want to lose. He doesn't want to lose his reelection campaign that's coming up because the people in his district don't want to put up with this nonsense, this impeachment nonsense, which is totally fabricated. But that's Jeff Van Drew from New Jersey, Congressional District 2, and he's actually announced that he's going to be switching parties this week. Now, let's run through just real quickly some of the newspapers because, you know, this is the media with one voice. They speak with one voice. Nobody is standing up to this except for a few people like Paul Sperry of Real Clear Investigations and a few other people are really standing up to this media noise, but they don't get any national airtime to speak of. You know, what gets national airtime is the uniparty, the single voice, which is pro-impeachment. Listen to this list of newspapers whose editorial boards have all called for impeachment. The New York Times, the Washington Post, USA Today, the LA Times, Salt Lake Tribune, the Tampa Bay Times, the Orlando Sentinel, Boston Globe, New York Daily News, Chicago Sun-Times, Philadelphia Inquirer, and San Francisco Chronicle. All of those newspapers, their editorial boards have called for impeachment. Well, impeachment for what? There's been no high crimes and misdemeanors. It simply hasn't occurred. You can't just impeach the president because you don't like him because you wish he didn't win the election. That's exactly what the Democrats are trying to do. And it's backfiring on them in a huge way. And we're glad for folks like Jeff Vandrew who are switching parties because that's the kind of fact, that's the kind of information that the public is really going to key in on. As they call it in the media, the optics of that are terrible for the Democrats. We're going to cover some of the Sunday shows and what happened with the IG report when we come back. Thank you for listening to the Morgan Streetman Show. We hope you enjoyed what you heard. And if you did, please click like and subscribe to help us out. And remember that we recommend that you exercise your brain at least once a week.